the time we have with today's guest, which is Ivan Schwartz, the president of the uh, Greater Cleveland Film Commission, soon to be ex-president. You uh, make the announcement today that uh, you're pursuing something else. We did. I mean, I've been here for almost 13 years to the day, and um, now is an opportunity to have one career left in me, and I thought if I don't do it now, I'll never do it. So uh, I decided to let go, hand over the reins, and let someone else take it to over the goal line. And you're going uh, with your wife for this like uh, entertainment media company. Well, what do you hope to be doing there? What type of work can we see you guys do? We hope to be producing our own content. Um, we've had this dream for a long time, and we've never really been able to pursue it because you know we've, I've had a full-time venture here trying to build an industry in Cleveland. But um, I, we, we just want to start, we've optioned some uh, projects and we'll see where they go, where they take us. You plan on staying around Cleveland or are you headed back to L.A. area? Or? No, we don't have any immediate plans. Um, Cleveland's been a great place to, for us to raise our family. And um, until we know what our next steps are, we're going we're gonna to hang around. Uh, why now? Why today? Why is this... Uh why is this um, the now or never time for you? You know, there's no perfect time. Yeah. Um, and it just seemed like this was the, the, the right time. You know, we were able to save the incentive um, from going away. And this would be a great time to to hand it off and let someone, like, like I said, you know, it's still, there's a lot to do in Cleveland. You know, we wanted to raise it to $100 million. We want to uh, trigger infrastructure. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, CSU's film school and Tri-C's film program creates um, people who want to stay here in Cleveland instead of going elsewhere to work. So there's, there's a lot to do to move this ball forward, but um, I feel like we've built a, a really good foundation from nothing, and um, you know, there's no time like the present. What's the biggest feather in your cap? You look back at 13 years here, well, what are you most proud of that you're going to leave behind? One, the, the, the young people. I love working with young people. And so that, you know, a lot of them have um, gone on to be successful in this industry, you know, both in Cleveland and elsewhere. But, you know, helping young people uh, uh, find their way in this industry because it's really tough. I would say the film school. Um, that film school would not be here if it wasn't for the film commission. And the idea of those kids choosing to stay and go to school in Cleveland versus film schools around the country, and then also providing them opportunities to stay here and work. Um, I'm really proud of that. I want to jump online here and see what sort of questions may be coming in from some, uh, some different people. What's your biggest regret? You see, film school, that's a big feather uh, in your cap. Uh, is there something you look back on the 13 years and go, man, I, I really wanted to get that done, but it didn't happen? You know, my goal since I got here was to really build an industry. And why we haven't been able to resonate in the state, in the community, is surprising to me when you watch um, what's happened in other states. You know, there's a, a new governor in uh, New Mexico who, t you know, became governor in January. And since then, they've doubled their incentive to $110 million. And you have Netflix Flix, and NBC Universal building facilities there um, within seven months. Um, moving it further, faster, has always been frustrating um, because I've always wanted to create an industry. I want people to look at Cleveland as a center of excellence um, from around the world. And the fact that we had to fight to save the incentive versus growing it, that's frustrating. Yeah. Um, so, you know, if I have a regret, uh, it's that we haven't been able to be more competitive globally um, and the only thing that's really holding us back is ourselves. It's not the, the incentive or the ability of how this industry works and bringing it here. It's really that uh, it's a desire. And I think Northeast Ohio and, and, and Ohio in general really needs to um, or can be global competitors in this industry if they so choose. It's at 60 right now, right, the tax incentive? It's 40 a year, oh. so it's 80 for the biennium. Okay, so 80. Where would you like it to be if you were calling the shots, and how much of a difference would we see if it were there? I'd like it to see at a hundred million minimum per year, and I would like to see infrastructure, sound stages um, being triggered. Um, I, that's what I would like to see, and that's what's necessary to really have an industry here. Yeah. At forty million dollars, we're a hobby. Um, we're dabbling. We really need to take it to 
where we can be globally competitive and people look at us as a production center. Um, and that, that is a real possibility for the state. What do people say when you go talk to them and say, I want you to come film in Cleveland? What were, what were they, I guess, most adamant about and excited about? Or, and what were, they, what were they hung up on where, ah, eh, maybe not? I mean, I think the exciting part was is that nobody had the negative perception of Cleveland that Clevelanders had. So when you go to Los Angeles or London or New York, people, it was a clean slate. I had a blank canvas to paint any picture of Cleveland that I wanted to. And then when they came here, they were always surprised. Everybody was like, oh my God, I had no idea. What a great town. It was so easy to film here. Um, so we really didn't like have negatives. The negative came from people either from Cleveland or Clevelanders themselves, like because people would ask me, why would anybody come here? How, you know, I mean, part of the problem I think now is that the industry isn't here because people don't believe it could be here. And how we overcome those challenges, um, you know, I wish I had the answer to because I, there's no doubt in my mind that Cleveland and, and Ohio cannot, shouldn't be a production center globally. Is there one that was really close, movie, series, to coming to Cleveland and film that we missed out on? That we don't know about. Is there something that you look back, man? We, I mean, we were they were ready to sign and, and they didn't do it. That would have been huge. So there's these movies that just happen to be the largest movie ever made, um, called uh, Avengers, uh, Infinity War, and Endgame. And if we had a robust incentive here, and we had infrastructure here, they would have spent a billion dollars here. And that every time I talk about it or say it, it. it, it it gnaws at me because it was ours to lose. And I really don't understand, you know, sometimes with the legislature and, um, uh, and the community sometimes, like, I, I don't think we are in a position to say goodbye to a billion dollars. That, that's not important to our community. Um, but again, people don't believe that's going to happen here. So we have to work hard to create that anything's possible here if you want it. It's not... There's nothing here that you can't do. You have to have the will. Yeah. Spider-Man coming here, right? Well, the, the Spider-Man came, you know, in, well, this is actually before my time, they shot second unit here, and everybody thought that was a big deal. But, you know, since we've been here, we've created 5,000 full-time equivalent jobs, um, uh, over $700 million of, of economic impact in the community. And listen, for every dollar that's spent on this incentive program, $2 is created in the local economy or the economies of Ohio. You know, you have a lot of naysayers who say that, you know, it's not a one-to-one -one on the state of Ohio coming into the coffers. It's not a one-to-one -one going to the state. But it's two-to-one if you were looking at creating jobs, investment in the community, attracting people to the state of Ohio. Um, and, and dollars, and we have to stop thinking. We we have to stop thinking with blinders, and we have to think bigger. And we need to look at this as we need to all be entrepreneurs, and really think about how Cleveland, what what is the city we want to look like? We always talk about these other things, and it, you know I think Dave Gilbert has done an amazing job at Destination Cleveland, but we can't define ourselves by one ofs. I want to make sure, I want to see a Cleveland that has traffic all the time. I want to see a Cleveland that anybody that wants to work in this industry any day of the week has that opportunity. And because there's a street closure, that means something's happening here. And that, you know, you go to cities and people complain about traffic, but that's because they have a robust economy. Yeah. That's because things are happening. And I don't define traffic um, as a failure, I find tra I define traffic as success. Not necessarily a bad thing, is it? Uh, I want to jump back here online and see what sort of uh, questions are coming in. What can you tell us about the next Russo Brothers movie with the actor currently playing Spider-Man? So I can tell you that we're working with the Russo Brothers. They want to bring their first movie that they're directing after Endgame to Ohio. And we are working really, really hard to make that happen. And we look forward to hopefully, um, if it's not announcing it in my, my time, it'll definitely be announced, hopefully shortly. But there is, we have a lot of work to do until we get there. 
Uh, what's the bigger catch? A Netflix-like studio or Amazon Hulu that shoots multiple series or, or things going on? Well, they're kind of the same. Yeah. You know, we want, uh, we're open for business for everything. And so a Netflix series or a Hulu series or an Apple series or um, a Netflix series, it's all great. Um, what we do want is we want series because that's long-term work for people. Um, but at the end of the day, anything that wants to shoot here should have that opportunity here, and we welcome all comers. What can you tell us about uh, the man you're handing the reins to, Evan? Don't like him. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's, uh, he's a great guy. You know, he's a Cleveland guy. He's from Cleveland, has 15 years of entertainment uh, experience, um, and he's the right person uh, to, to move this ball forward. He has the passion for the city. He understands the industry. He's this is not. He understands that it's not a hobby, and that this is a business, and it could be a a huge part of the economy for for Northeast Ohio. And I think he's ready for that challenge, which it's definitely a challenge. But also, he's excited for to, to bring his family home. So I mean, I think it's a win-win for for everyone. It's a win-win for him, and to to be able to come home and do great things for, you know, a community that, um, where he's from, and it allows me to pursue other things, so it's a win-win. Are you going to completely shut that door? And listening to you talk right now, I feel like you're going to be calling Evan at least once a month and being like, hey, I, I think you, are you going to be able to completely step away, or do you plan on, eh, you know, maybe I'll leave him my business card on the way out in case he wants to call and talk to me about something? No, listen, I'm here to help, Yeah. and I feel strongly about how this city um, could benefit from the industry and that there are things that we didn't get done. You know, it's, it's his reign. He gets to take over from now, but I am here to help in any way I possibly can. Uh, he knows that my, my, you know, he's got my number and that he could call me anytime and I'm here to help. Um, obviously, I don't want to get in anybody's way, uh, but I am definitely want, you know, my vision and what we started hasn't changed. I think Cleveland could be a global player in this industry, and I don't think anybody should stop until uh, it is truly a global player. I think it benefits, it raises all boats. You know, this isn't about individuals or one company or, you know, one person. This is really about raising the tide, the boats for everybody. It's that type of industry that everybody can benefit, whether it's bringing new businesses, Griffin Electric, production services, um, companies that don't exist here that should exist here because there's a vibrant industry, uh, about growing the population. You know, I mean, I keep remembering just recently I read that next year we're going to have more 60-year-olds in Cleveland in Cuyahoga County than 20-year-olds. That should be a driving force for everybody yeah. in what they're doing so that we can change that trend. We need, and having a film school here, and having young people here, and then creating jobs for them to stay here, stay here. will make a difference. I want to jump online here real quick and see if we get a couple more questions. Uh, we have a little bit uh, more time here. Have you ever been starstruck by someone who's been filming around you? You know, my starstruck moment, I don't get starstruck, um, because I've been in the industry a long time, and, and people are people. But I have to say, one of the most exciting opportunities that I ever had was when they were doing draft day here, and it, they were shooting opening day. This is probably two or three years, no, maybe even longer now, four years ago. And I got to stand on the sideline during a game. And I usually, it takes a lot to impress me. Yeah. But listening to the, the, the crashing of those pads and the, the sounds from the field, uh, was amazing, and it was an, a truly amazing experience, and that was really, really exciting. What's the relationship like with the city of Cleveland and with the state of Ohio? That's kind of one that you're trying to go back and forth with, based here in Cleveland. But you, you know, we, we talked about the tax credit. You go to Columbus for that. What's the relationship right. like that with the film commission? I mean, we have the city has been, you know, um, uh, they've been amazing through this process. You know. I wish that we had a streamlined permitting process. I mean, that's the one thing about the city that I wish we we had created. But other than that, they are super supportive of the filming that comes here. Uh, the county has been very supportive as well. Um, they have been advocates for the incentive down in Columbus. 
you know, it is a statewide incentive that can benefit the city greatly. And I'd like to see their support of this industry continue because I think it's going to make a huge difference in the future of this city. Do you think politics will ever hurt? We hear from places uh, that maybe pass certain laws that maybe companies don't want to come film there anymore. People look ahead to maybe the heartbeat bill in Ohio. Do you think that would deter companies from coming here? Well, I think what deters companies from coming here is no film incentive. If you're going to pull the incentive out of the budget and make us fight that hard just to get it back in, to, to break even, uh, to get it to where it was instead of growing an industry here, um, you know, the minute that we pulled, you know, the 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 speaker pulled the industry the, the industry from the um, the budget, people pulled out of the state, and we lost movies. You know what? We lost Cargo. I mean, Cargo, Fargo, the fourth season. They were going to shoot here, and they're gone. You know, that's what hurts. So, if you don't have a film incentive, you don't have an opportunity for people to come here. You know, with people's politics, everybody does things for, you know, people come and shoot in Cleveland or whatever city, what, because they're from there, they had a great experience there, um, you know, they, they come and, and choose to shoot someplace or not for a slew of reasons. And, you know, politics is sometimes one of those reasons, but, you know, it hasn't hurt Georgia. Um, it's, you know, people are talking about it, but at the end of the day, it's about economics. And the people who get hurt are the the people working in the industry. And, you know, like I said, we've created 5,000 full-time equivalent jobs in Ohio. And the people who get hurt by, by these actions are those 5,000 people who are going to have to look for work in other states. And I just don't think that's fair. The, the naysayers that, that come against the tax credit, what do you say to them to get them to come around? Or what do they say to you to say why they don't want to elevate it? You know, we gotta we got to stop being short-sighted. You know, we're looking, we are in a, a, a city and a community and a state that is looking to reinvent itself constantly. We need to be part of the solution of creating jobs, getting, attracting people to the state. Because, you know, there, one of my favorite arguments is that, you know, um, that that money should go toward teachers. And I'm like, I agree. I think teachers are the least um, appreciated you know, one of the least appreciated workers in our in our in our economy. However, if you don't have anybody to teach, you don't need teachers. If you're not having people moving to our state and and setting up shop here and and, and creating jobs here and increasing the population, who exactly are those teachers going to teach? That's a good point. I want to jump back online here and get a couple more questions before we uh, we let you off the hook. Uh, see what uh, see what ones are coming in here. Your biggest accomplishment? It, it's the film school. The film school? Yeah, by far. Band of Brothers. Band of Brothers was is that bigger? Biggest, uh, well, my biggest accomplishment in Cleveland was is, was the film school. I definitely think my biggest the the best project they ever worked on ever was Band of Brothers. Um, being able to get to know the men of Easy Company and and spend the time with them and create a show that obviously has a legacy, a long, uh, uh, ongoing legacy. Um, you, you know, you, you just, you, what you hope you have moments like that in your life. Yeah. And being able to work with that group of people and the group of people who wanted to get it right from the very beginning. You know, we were always consulting with the Men of Easy Company. You know, where were you standing? What were you doing? I mean, one of my favorite moments was before we started shooting, I was, Tra retracing the steps of Easy Company, and I was literally calling Major Winter, saying, "Okay, I am now at the Eagle's Nest. Walk me through what you did." You know, literally on the phone, and having him allow me to retrace his steps and retrace the the steps of Easy Company was truly one of the most moving and profound um, experiences in my life. And to to work with people like Tom Hanks and Steven Spielberg, who really who got it, who wanted to make sure that we got it right and had such admiration for these these men and for history um, was a great experience. But, you know, a close second, and I was reminded of it this weekend, was uh, From the Earth to the Moon. I was re-watching that series and I was like, oh my God, this is a really smart show. And, you know, that was chronicling the um, Apollo missions 
and again with Tom Hanks and you know I've been really really lucky to work with somebody who who had the gravitas to get these kind of shows made yeah um, and and because they were just such important stories to be told uh, I want to end with this you're cleaning up your desk and you're gonna leave a note on the top to Evan when he steps in what do you include in that note don't give up always push don't take no for an answer um, Failure is not an option. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. And we thank you, thank you for being a part. Let's be clear.